Good morning, people. Watch them at 65. Lisa Boyce, I'm going to give you a verse of scripture. Happy Catterday. <laughs> Happy Catterday. I'm going to give you a verse of scripture out of Romans 6, 19. And it says, I speak after the manner of man, of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, servants, to uncleanness, and to the iniquity unto iniquity, even so now, yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. This is talking to the unsaved. The unsaved. So let me give you the gospel in which you're saved by. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to Scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. That is how we're saved, why we're saved, and how we're kept saved, through his death, burial, and resurrection, his blood. Is what cleanses us from all sins. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have eternal life. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ and his blood, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. You are protected by the blood of Jesus. You are rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time. And you're sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, lead you, guide you, minister to you, encourage you, speak to you, teach you, and change you if you let him. If you let him. So, this came out this morning on Jerusalem Post. I don't see a ceasefire or any kind of peace agreement in the future while we're still here. The first thing that came out this morning was Hamas official says optimism for a ceasefire hostage deal is an illusion. I told you yesterday the U.S. is grasping at, at straws here. Senior Hamas spokesperson Samu Zari, or Zuri, says optimism that a ceasefire hostage deal will be reached soon is an illusion. The Qatari um, news site quotes uh, Zuri as saying Israel is sabotaging chances for a deal and that Washington is backing these efforts. We are not on the cusp of any agreement or real negotiations. Rather, the imposition of American dic uh, dictations. Now, I looked on Telegram, and I don't listen to Amir, but one thing he said I totally 100% agree with. If a time is now to attack Hezbollah, the time is now, while Israel has a chance. I totally agree with that. If they're going to do something, they should do it now. And not wait for this. Now, the reason, another reason why there's not, I don't see a ceasefire. I could be wrong again, but I don't see it. This happened. To them, earlier today, sometime ago, this happened. The Israeli Air Force eliminates Hezbollah Rotwin Commander Hussan Abraham. So the IDF has announced that earlier in the day, two soldiers were wounded at a, as a result of projectiles launched from Lebanon and landed in the area in an area near that near somewhere over there, Misgab. Um, that's what it says here. <clears throat> it says that an Air Force, Israeli Air Force, an Israel Air Force drone 
hit the motorcycle of Hezbollah commander Hussein Ibrahim in southern Lebanon today. Shortly after Hezbollah fired 55 rockets into northern Israel, the IDF confirmed. Now you still think there's going to be something going on? Yeah. I understand. Now listen. This is a mighty force that's coming after Israel right now. Not to mention Russia and China also. That's going to join forces and North Korea with whatever they have. This is a mighty army. We have never seen anything like this. Israel. This is why they're trying to warm up to the U.S. Israel needs the support of the U.S. I mentioned this the other day. This is why they're doing what they're doing. They need the weaponry of the U.S. They need the support of the U.S. to back this up. Now, the U.S. is backing Israel in a corner <clears throat> by coming out saying that if you do this, you're not going to get anything from us. And that could be the only reason why they would do a deal. That's the only reason why. This whole thing has the U.S. all over it. And this is another reason why the U.S. will be destroyed. You don't back Israel in a corner without God coming in involved in it. I'm just saying. This goes on to say here that <clears throat> excuse me, Abra uh, Abraham was a commander in Hezbollah's Ratwin force, a force which has the main goal of infiltrating northern Israel. The IDF confirmed Saturday afternoon that shortly after sirens sounded in the area, in northern Israel, approximately 55 projectiles crossed from Lebanon. The IDF confirmed Saturday afternoon that shortly after sirens sounded, some of the barrages fell into open areas in northern Israel. While initial reports uh, indicate that there were no injuries, the military later confirmed that two people were receiving treatments for wounds incurred during the barrage at the uh, Ram, uh, Rambam Medical Center, two men were hit by shrapnel and were transferred to the hospital by helicopter. Their conditions were described as mild and moderate. The wounded man in moderate condition is undergoing surgery right now. So, again... I don't see any sign right now, this moment, of a ceasefire. And I do believe, especially with this little thing that just happened, yeah, yeah. And like I said, the thing that will get Israel is the fact that the U.S. will totally, but the U.S. would totally tell Israel, hey, look, either pull out or we're not going to supply you with anything. That would be the only thing I can think of that they would go for. Otherwise, um, I don't think, I don't think this thing is going to happen. I really don't. I think, matter of fact, I think something is going to come to pass this weekend, if not shortly. Um, this is huge. They took out another leader. Israel took out another leader. So this is not going to go well with them again. Now, it says here the IDF confirmation came shortly after a correspondent for the Hezbollah-affiliated Lebanese news agency reported the terror group fired over 40 rockets in two successive salvos towards the Galilee. Hezbollah later said in a statement that it had struck uh, the Ayalat Hashar in northern Israel in retaliation for the strike. The IDF also announced that earlier in the day two soldiers were wounded. 
One soldier's condition was categorized as severe. These soldiers were evacuated to a hospital for medical treatment and their families have been notified. Now, again, I don't see anything, a ceasefire or any kind of deal being made right now that could change, but I don't know. Now, Russia <laughs> vows harsh response if Ukraine attacks the nuclear plant. And that harsh response will unleash, it says here, will unleash, the Russian military will unleash a swift retaliation if Ukraine launches an attack on the Kursk nuclear power plant located not far from the front line following Kiev's cross-border incursion, the defense ministry in Moscow has warned. In a statement today, the ministry said it was taking very seriously reports of Kiev's plan to attack the nuclear power plant located 90 kilometers from the Ukraine-Russian border. which has become the scene of fierce fighting in recent days. So according to the military, the purpose of such provocation would be to accuse Russia of attacking the plant. If the Kiev regime begins to realize this criminal plans aimed at creating a man-made disaster in, Euro in the European part of the continent, that would infer the radioactive contamination of vast territories. Though military and military technical countermeasures will be taken immediately. While the ministry did not give details of a possible retaliation, <clears throat> excuse me, it noted that he has preparation for an attack on that plant, which Moscow claims are backed by the West. Backed by the West, would contaminate the United Nations resolution on combating nuclear terrorism. The statement comes after Russian military journalist Marat Karulian reported on Friday, citing sources that Kiev was preparing a nuclear false flag. So, according to the reporter, the strike could be launched on either Russia's Zaporozhye nuclear power plant in Inagodar, also not far from the front line, or the Kursk nuclear power plant. Ukraine has vehemently denied the allegation. Of course they would. <clears throat> According to Russian officials, the Kursk plant, which is critical or crucial, for the power supply of several neighboring regions continues to operate normally for right now. So we'll see what happens. Folks, um, I don't see any peace. Again, I don't see anything. I see the rapture of the church and those who have put their faith and trust in Christ. And I see that happening soon. But I just don't see it. Especially with Israel taking out that leader. And I also don't see it for um, Ukraine. Ukraine is through. They're, I mean, it's just done. So I'm going to link both of these in the description box. And again, if anything else comes up. Um, let me see before I leave. Is anything else? Yeah, well, <laughs> this just came in. Russia to Ukraine. This is from Medvedev. Time is up. No negotiated peace. Just complete capitulation or complete destruction. So this just came in, and uh, Dmitry Med, uh, Medvedev, Russia's former president and prime minister, 
<clears throat> has publicly said that Russia will seek to occupy remaining Ukrainian lands. Even if Ukraine Zelensky agrees to the Kremlin's most recent conditions for peace. In other words, it don't matter. You're done. Medvedev, now deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia, reaffirmed that Russia will not accept or uphold any negotiated peace settlements for Kiev short of Ukrainian capitulation, the destruction of the entire Ukrainian state, and the full occupation of Ukraine. Now, this is off of Hal Turner, I know. But he said something here that makes sense. If Ukraine had have abided by the Minsk agreement, they could have been all right. But they didn't. They would have had peace, no war. Their army would still be intact. Their country would still be whole. Now, something just dropped in my spirit. I don't know where it is in the Bible. But something just dropped in my spirit. This whole thing with Ukraine has to do with the end times. For some reason, I don't know why, but I have to do more research on it. And the Lord has to show it to me more. But this Ukraine thing, Ukraine, also has to do with end times. Probably because of the U.S., So I have an appointment. I got to leave. But if anything else comes up, then I will be back on. I'll be back on sooner than later. Thank you.